Good day there guys, it's your Aussie hubby Marky, back at it again with another r slash legal advice video. Now with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good legal advice. Now our first post is by user ChiroQuack92, titled, Utah. A went to a chiropractor for a free consultation, and he just billed my insurance $850. How can I take this fricker and the person shilling for him down? I made an account to ask this because I couldn't find much on my own. Sorry if I messed something up. So about a year ago, I was in a car accident that screwed my back up pretty bad. I got a pretty huge payout because of it, and my insurance has been covering a lot of the treatments for me. Recently I had to change physical therapists temporarily because of an unrelated matter, but my temp recommended I go to see this guy, Dr. Dave. She claimed up and down on how good he was the best and I got into contact with him. When I got into contact with his office, I was told that my first consolation and adjustment would be free. I have this in writing via emails. So I went and saw him last week and let me tell you, he is as creepy as they come. Despite him having a wife and family, he seemed to be hitting on me and telling me how good my body was. I'm a guy, ha, <laughs> thanks man. Along with this, right out of the gate he began to diagnose me with everything from arthritis, slipped discs, and words that I swear he just made up. In the end, he said he wanted me to get onto a $9,000 three week plan where I came in every day, and after that, moved to twice a week. This would not include my adjustment that day, which would only be $140. Suffice to say, I screwed off as quick as I could. Everything he said I had was wrong. Along with this, despite the fact I never said I was in an accident to him or his workers, they had very specific details about it. Turns out that my new physical therapist is his niece. So after a week of getting a new temp physical therapist and giving my doctor a good laugh at the diagnosis he gave me, my insurance gave me a call. This guy just billed them $850 for a chiropractic consolation. When I went, I gave them my insurance info because they claimed it was policy and I thought nothing of it. I was wrong. My insurance is now investigating and said that their lawyers will contact me and that if I get a bill, to send it to them. And that sounds good, but honestly, I'm ticked at him and his niece. From a friend that I know who has been going to his niece temporarily, also said she's been recommending him to her too, even though her injury is not back related. So my question is simple. How do I get this man put out of business? Who do I report him to and his niece to? Some may say this is petty, but that's my middle name. Edit, felt like I should do this. Sorry if this breaks some rules. I kind of got carried away when I made this post. Since my accident hearing from miracle pushes is kind of normal. I've heard this gambit from special supplements to oils. doTERRA has ruined multiple friendships. So when I went to this guy and he pushed his cure all and told me what was really wrong and that he could cure it, I got a little ticked off. If that was it, then whatever. The fact that he had the nerve to then charge my insurance for this just boiled my blood and so I may have been a little too warpathy in my post. I will report him and the PT to the medical boards and pretty much let my insurance handle it from there. I am a PT. Report the woman to your state's board of physical therapy. She violated HIPAA because you were most likely not a patient of his before she shared all of your information. You might want to investigate if your state's kickback laws apply to the either slash both the PT and Cairo. Stark laws come to mind. Yeah, I'll be reporting her and the Cairo. Even if she was, there are pretty strict guidelines for what can be shared between different offices without patient consent. If the OP didn't authorize the snake or chiropractor to obtain her medical records, there's a good chance they violated HIPAA. You've got good advice on how to report the uncle. Please make sure to also report the niece. From what I can tell, she did two things wrong. One, there's no way a PT should be referring you to a chiropractor. The fact they are related makes it look worse. Someone sent you to her. I would report her to that person's organization, especially if that's who she works for. Two, she likely shared your information with her uncle. That is very likely a HIPAA violation. 
there should be plenty of information in this sub for reporting that. You should be able to trust medical professionals and their referrals. I applaud you for turning them in and helping to limit the damage they will cause in the future. I sent an email to the organization that she works for, telling them the story and how she shared my info. The friend is planning on writing to them as well. I might report her to the licensing board too. Please report the HIPAA violation. What happens sounds very unethical. If it turns out everything was ethical, then the HIPAA investigation will likely find no fault and nothing bad will happen. If it's as bad as I think it is, it needs to be marked on her record in case it ever comes up again. I doubt you were the first or last person that they try to con. Yeah, I'm going to fill out a complaint with the licensing board and include this. The chiropractor knew things about the accident that were impossible even if he had read the news reports about my accident. So she definitely told him. And now, update. Chiropractor tried to charge my insurance for a free visit. So, after that post, things got interesting to say the least. A lawyer from my insurance company got into contact with me and asked me a bunch of questions and told me a little of what was going on. Turns out that Dr. Dave was already being investigated by my insurance company for fraudulent charges and that I wasn't the only one who went in for a free consultation and adjustment and been charged. The lawyer told me that I probably won't need to do anything else as they were handling it and to stay as far away from the doctor as possible. If this was the end of it, I wouldn't have even come back. Here I am, so something happened, and boy was it satisfying. I submitted complaints to the board that licenses chiropractors and physical therapists after my last post, along with a harsh email to the company the PT was working for. Well, this last Friday, I got an email from said company apologizing. They said that the PT who referred me to him is no longer with us and will not be practicing in the near future. Along with this, on Dr. Dave's Facebook page, they released a statement saying that they will not be taking new patients for the foreseeable future. So, it seems that for the time being, these two won't be pulled the crap they had with me, a win-win. Thanks for the advice on the original post and calming me down from my salt the earth mentality. I really needed it. Our next post is by user Aquatic Quiet, titled, My neighbor is literally starving his ducks slash chickens to death. I don't know what else to do. I live in Pennsylvania. My neighbor hasn't been feeding his chickens and ducks. He keeps them locked up in 4x5 wire cage. Their only shelter is literally a bucket turned sideways full of mud and feces. We've been sneaking food over and have talked to the neighbor about animal food banks and everything. I contacted the local SPCA and another rescue. SPCA said they would come out three days ago and never did. And yesterday, one of the chickens was dead. We didn't realize he just never fed them at all. The other chickens were just laying next to the dead one, crying. We called the local cops and they never called back. I called the state police and they sent a dude out yesterday. We didn't call the neighbors at all because we didn't want them to have time to remove the dead chicken. We have pictures. I contacted another rescue who were willing to take the ducks and chickens. There are only two ducks and I think two chickens left now, but they don't have an officer to deal with animals, they just take in rescues. I don't know what else to do. I'm waiting for the neighbor to get home and just outright ask them to buy them and then take them to the rescue, but if they don't sell, what can I do? Can I keep calling the cops until they get sick of coming out here and do something? And why didn't the cop do anything when there is clear animal abuse slash neglect happening? Edit. The two little chickens are gone and the dead one. Also, one of the ducks is missing. They haven't been turning on the heat lamp. We're assuming the rest of the chickens and one of the ducks has died. We put out three cut up apples, green beans, and a whole pack of strawberries from them yesterday, and it's all gone. Don't know if they ate it or the neighbor removed it. Old mate auntie fascist says, call animal control. They are who handles animal abuse complaints. So I googled this for my county and literally just got pest controls and rescue orgs that I already contacted, including the SPCA. I'm up to five rescue orgs that won't respond to me at all. 
I did some googling and it seems like you need to contact your local Humane Society police officer. There's a police officer specifically trained slash tasked with dealing with animal cruelty. You can search here to find yours on pda.state.pa.us. I don't know how likely it is that any action will be taken given that we're talking about chickens and ducks, which are food animals, but you can try. You can also research whether your municipality has laws about the number of ducks or chickens people can have, size and location of enclosures, etc. If they're keeping more animals than allowed, or the enclosure is too close to the property line, or something like that, you could involve code enforcement and they might find the person. If he gets fined, he might decide it's better to get rid of the animals than do whatever he needs to get compliant. There are only two ducks left since yesterday, there were three ducks and three chickens. I'm going to ask to buy the last two at this point. Thank you though. I have a rescue willing to take them if he sells them to me. How do you know for sure that he isn't feeding them? And what do you mean by the other chickens were just laying there next to the dead one crying? By neighbor, I mean we share a walkway type thing have the same landlord. I can hear when with a fight, we're that close. The enclosure is right behind both of our houses. Anytime we go back there, there is no food. They went away for three days and had no one to come feed them. They told us where the food was one time, and when we talked to him about it, there not being any food, and when we checked for food to feed them the bag was empty. The last time we saw them have food was when we were away for three days, but the food is not covered and it rained and the food got washed out. The only water they get is when it rains, and their only water bowl is the size of a dog dish which is usually half mud slash water. The dead chicken was in the bucket that they have for shelter, and the two younger chickens were inside next to the dead one, just peeping and whatever noises chickens make. I raise chickens. When I feed my chickens, every bit of food I throw out to them is gone within minutes. They eat it immediately. There is never any food just sitting out. I thought that too. But with the fact that there is literally no feed in the shed, and that they went away for three days, not worried about if they were fed or not, and now one chicken is dead, I'm pretty confident that they don't feed them. Edit. Also, whenever we talked about him, if he feeds them, he would say they're going through a hard time and it's difficult. They are somewhat animal hoarders. They have a rabbit and a snake and eight cats inside. The husband told us since they can't afford to get the cats fixed, they keep six of them locked in one room. What the fu- Did you report the cats to the Humane Society or the other animal welfare groups as well? Sad to say, they might not know what to do about the ducks and chickens or aren't equipped to handle those. If that's the case, that's likely why you're not getting that much traction there. But they usually do know what to do with the cats that are being neglected. If they can't afford to get the cats fixed, chances are there's far more than eight cats in the house. We did when we reported the ducks and chickens. They said there is nothing they can do since the cats are inside. I don't know why, and that was from the SPCA when they said they would come out. I think at this point, I've reported it to two different police stations and five or six rescue orgs and got nothing. I'm just sad and angry about the whole thing, and I'm going to try and buy the last two ducks at this point. Oh dang, I was hoping you could use the angle of the cats to get them to take action, since any sign of neglect with animals usually means all the animals are being neglected. I wonder if adult protective services might be able to help. Hoarding animals is a psychological issue, and having that many cats could be a health problem because of the fecal matter. Especially in the one room. I can't even imagine. I have a friend with eight cats and two dogs, but you can't even tell. She keeps up on the litter boxes every day and is not a crappy person, haha, <laughs> but um, tss, and works with the rescue for cats. But I highly doubt our neighbors take care of them. The wife literally does nothing. So the husband says, she wants the animals and he takes care of them. She also works with children, so what the hell? That's just, I don't know, I don't know. Sounds like a great lady. And now, update. My neighbors were starving their chickens and ducks to death. This didn't get a lot of traction at all, but for the like two or three people who responded, the neighbor apparently told the cop that the chickens died from sharing a space with the ducks. Nothing will be done on that end. There were originally four chickens altogether, and all four died within three days. 
there are three ducks left. I went out today to offer to purchase the ducks from him to take them to a sanctuary that I found who would have taken them, but they apparently already found a new home for them and the new owners will be coming to pick them up on Wednesday, so hopefully they have a better life after this. The only orgs that have contacted me back were the ones that didn't deal with animal abuse slash neglect to let me know they can't help, which I appreciated. I'm pretty upset about the lack of response from the SPCA. They haven't contacted us at all since the day before they said they would come out to investigate. I don't know, maybe one or two of the chickens could still be alive if they did. Apparently the wife is upset and going crazy about getting rid of the remaining ducks, but she's literally not once has left her house outside of going to work. She has never ever gone back there with the ducks and chickens. I'm pretty sure she has hoarding tendencies at this point and her husband enables her. The husband didn't seem at all phased that we called the cops on him. I think he's just done with the whole situation to be honest. So I failed at saving those poor chickens, but I like to think that since the cop came out, they decided to get rid of the ducks. So while the cop didn't seem to care at all about this situation and he just had to be there because it's his job, I'm still thankful he showed up because I think it helped scare the neighbor. That's a terrible resolution to this story. Nothing was good about these posts. Probably one of the worst I've heard. I'm upset. But anyway, let's go to the next story. Our next post is by user Grubby Butthole. You just love to hear it, don't you? Oregon, my town is refusing to enforce the law on people who are poor. I posted here a while ago about my millennial hating neighbor and I back with a new issue from this guy and that also involves my town council as well. At the beginning of my year, my neighbor decided to rent his detached garage to a woman and her boyfriend. A few weeks after they moved in, there started to be problems. The renters started screaming and fighting, collecting junk outside their dwelling, including lots of trash, letting their dog dig into my yard, and trespassing on my property, just to name a few things. Wow. I called my county's animal control every time I had an issue with their dog, and called the police every time I had an issue with my neighbor. I have cameras up and have footage of all the crap they have that they have pulled. I have asked the renters to stop. I have attempted to talk to my neighbor with to no avail. Not with no avail? Come on, man. In an attempt to get these jerks gone, I spoke to my county's code enforcement, because garages are not allowed to be dwellings in my county. Unfortunately, I live in the city limits, and so it falls to my city for jurisdiction. They also have the same law, but they have decided to not enforce this law because the renters are poor and are on disability and could sue the city for kicking them out. Actual words from a person I spoke to in my town hall. I have spoken with another person who works in my town, as a cop, and not enforcing the law on poor people is becoming the norm in my town. Anything from speeding to theft is not enforced if you claim that it was done because you're poor. Unfortunately, the crime rate in my town has skyrocketed in the last year, while the town resident number hasn't increased. But more and more poor people seem to be committing crimes. I get that the city has some ability to use discretion in matters like this, but can they just decide to not enforce the law on a certain group of people? Maybe try the fire department? Does the garage have two means of egress, front and back, or a large enough window that someone could exit through the window? Does it have a kitchen and electricity? If no kitchen, are they using space heaters and hot plates? If there is a kitchen, is that all up to code? This could be a fire hazard and generally fire marshals do not screw around when people are blatantly creating a fire hazard. I've spoken to the fire marshal and he is also a city employee. He told me that there are six other dwellings that he knows of in our town. He is trying to get the city to either make them legal dwellings and bring them up to code and tax the landlords, or enforce the law on the books and not allow people to live in them. I guess the one behind us is better because the landlord lives on site, the others have landlords who live out of town slash state and don't maintain them. And someone else says, Yes, they can largely choose their own law enforcement priorities and manage their risk of lawsuits. You can sue the renters for any damage they cause to your property. And someone else says, Having or not having money is not a protected class. The city can absolutely decide to be compassionate to people who cannot afford fines slash would otherwise be homeless. 
If you're not a fan of this practice, get active in your city's government. That's the thing, they wouldn't be homeless. They qualify for Section 8 housing. The social worker who came out and talked to them and I informed me of that. The problem is the woman won't give up her dog, and the apartment complex in my town doesn't allow pit bulls. But the apartment complex on the town over do. But she doesn't want to live 20 minutes from our town. Qualifying for Section 8 doesn't mean much when the waiting list is years and years long. She probably doesn't want to live 20 minutes away because she doesn't have reliable transportation, and if your town only has one apartment complex, I'd bet Section 8 housing is nearly impossible to get. As others have said, doesn't matter if you qualify for Section 8, because it can literally take more than a decade to get access to it. The resources are stretched far too thin, so a lot of people are living on the verge of homelessness, even people who are disabled and literally unable to support themselves. By not enforcing fines, the city is actually trying to help vulnerable people avoid losing what little they have. Perhaps perspective can help you see the good in what they are doing, even if the outcome isn't always favourable or fair. More resources are needed for better outcomes. That said, you also have rights. Being poor doesn't entitle a person to doing as they please, with no regard for the others or the law. The city must maintain a delicate balance. You can impact the situation by reporting crimes, becoming active in local governments, getting to know your neighbours and establishing rapport, and or moving. I am not a lawyer. First of all, the police don't have to make arrests and the city doesn't have to charge or prosecute them, but they will take a report. So make sure you're filing reports and keeping any documentation you have. Second, and this is as much a question for you as it is for the sub, since the property owner lives on site, could you sue the tenants for the property damage to your fence and any other real monetary damages they've caused you, and then attach the landlord slash property owner to it, and potentially his homeowner's insurance? If so, I would suspect that you could come to some settlement that would favour him getting rid of the tenants in a hurry, rather than face continued liability from them. If this is the apple tree neighbour, he could be doing it to spite you. Since his concerns seem to be his property value, threatening his homeowner's insurance might get some movement. If this is another neighbour, he may just need the money and a threat to his income stream might be enough to fix things civilly. Either way. And now... Update. Oregon, my town is refusing to enforce the law on people who are poor. I thought I would update you guys on what has happened since the original post. But first, I will clarify some things. One, this isn't a race issue. My town is over 95% white. I am actually a minority. This issue is about my police force slash town not wanting to be mean on people who are poor and breaking the law. Two, I have no idea why my neighbours liked to be in my yard. I have nothing in my yard and haven't since November other than a doghouse, rocks and wood rounds. No fruit trees, pools, playgrounds or toys. My guess is that they, especially the women, lack boundaries. 3. The pattern that I see is that people who live in a legitimate house, regardless of if they own or rent, are ignored when someone damages their property. My neighbour had her car windows smashed. Even with security footage and the kid bragging about what he did, the police refuse to do anything because his parents are poor. They live in a trailer park. Now for the update. I went and spoke with my town's mayor. He understood where I was coming from, and I have a date to address my city council with the issue that I'm currently having with the police department and the city's current stance on enforcing laws. I was also informed that the state of Oregon passed a law requiring almost all towns and counties to allow additional dwelling units, ADUs. My mayor has asked me to help lead a committee, to make my town laws favourable to all parties as they try to come into compliance. As for my neighbours, the renters, well, they are in some hot water. A few days after I made my post, my friend, who is a mandatory reporter, was house-sitting for me. She witnessed the renter's boyfriend beat one of the grandkids with a belt. She called DHS and the police. The police did nothing, and DHS took the report. The police not doing anything, they didn't even show up, ticked my friend off. My friends talked with an individual from the state's police who they know from work. They let them know something is seriously off about the renters and that the local PD doesn't want to deal with it. Well, 
Over a week ago, I witnessed a guy shooting up while the crazy neighbor lady talked to him. I called the My County's Drug Task Force and reported it. Two days later, the county raided the dwelling and arrested the neighbors, the renters, the daughter and another person, all for dealing heroin. The kids were taken into protective custody and me and a few other people were questioned about everything. My county and state police are now in the process of reviewing my town's police force for corruption. Apparently, they have had corruption issues several times in the past. God, so it's not the first time, that's lovely. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this one today, that's where I'm going to leave the episode at. Tell me what you thought about these r slash legal advice stories. I know I, l I read a lot of comments on this one, but like, those comments just added to the stories so much. Especially the chicken one. It started with chickens, and if I didn't read all the way down to the bottom, how will we know that they're abusing the cats too? That's insane. Why was that not even like talked about in the update? What's wrong with people? How are they just allowing this to happen? My brain, my brain, why? I, it's gotta be, it's gotta be fake. It can't be real. It can't. I don't understand. Anyway, guys, that's my rant. That's what I'm gonna get off my chest. That's my my hot take of today's issue. I hope you guys have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. This is Marky, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.